this is Sarah, the Stitchin' Mommy, and it's Tuesday, um, January 19th, and I'm here for a quick stitching update all about my cross stitch this week. Um, I didn't film yesterday, and I knew that last week, I just had forgotten. Yesterday was Martin Luther King Jr. Day here in the United States, and so my kids and my husband had the day off, so it was kind of like another, it was a holiday for us, and so when I have holidays, everybody's home, I can't film. <laughs> <laughs> We're usually doing other things, family things. Um, yesterday we got a game table delivered, which we'd ordered in the summer. So we were really excited to get that assembled and we played a game. So that's kind of what I did with my day yesterday. So now I can share my stitching and hopefully I will be back Monday next week. Um, but you never know, life. <laughs> so let's see, first off, I did receive a few um, goodies. First one is my color and cotton threads of the month from November. She's a little behind, but I think that is due to the fact that they, she, uh, Angela at Color and Cotton and her team have moved to a bigger studio. So I'm assuming that slowed things down. Um, so I'm excited for them and love getting her colors. So these are all really pretty. These are very Christmassy looking, which makes sense if they were for November because you're probably wanting to do lots of Christmas stitching. So those are really pretty. There's um, Carmine Balsam, makes sense for Christmas trees, Winter Prairie, and Brandy, which I think I might have, and Adobe. I might have that one too. So some of these might be duplicates, but they're always loved and used. <laughs> I, I enjoy finding patterns that um, don't have specific called for colors like uh, Heaven and Earth Designs and Mirabilia's and some of those, you don't want to mess with them too much. Um, so anything else, it's fun to just pull from what I've been collecting. So <clears throat> I do have a couple patterns lined up in my queue in the next month or two that I might start that I'll need to do some more uh, <laughs> kidding up. So I will share those later when I know more details. But I also received a big package of goodies from the Fat Quarter Shop. Um, lots of things this time. Sometimes they just send one or two charts. This week, this year, this month was quite a few things. So one was this um, this little pattern, Just My Type, which is like a Valentine's pattern with a typewriter and some letters. Very sweet. So that's pretty cute. And they sent some more stitch cards. These are actually their Christmas stitch cards. Set G. I really like the snow globe and the presents. Those are cute and they come with one pattern per card. So these are something that you can, could be fun for like greeting cards or beginning stitchers or cross stitching on a, on some of these bags, speaking of bags that um, they put out. This is a big one it's called Big Dotty Project Bag. These are at the Fat Quarter Shop. This is huge. This is folded in half too. It's um. 16 by 18 by six and a half. So it has a big gusset on the bottom as well. So if you have a large project, <laughs> which I do, but I don't carry my projects in bags necessarily, but this would hold like a whole vacation's worth of cross stitching <laughs> in one bag. So that's amazing, very big. Um, they also sent this pack of ne magnetic needle cases. And there's three of them in there. They all have different sayings, get to the point, need a little love that's cute and stay sharp and so i thought and just before this i opened one up just to see what it was like and they're um plastic outside and you open them up and it's got a big magnet right here let's grab a needle and it just sticks on there so this could be pretty handy for travel stitching and the, if the package comes with three um so then you could keep them in a variety of stitches projects and have possibly, I'm curious if, uh, I don't have my stork scissors up here. I don't know if these ones are magnetic enough. No, those, those ones don't work. I was thinking maybe my stork scissors might, might uh, fit on here too. So that's kind of fun. All right, I got interrupted <laughs> by a little one. Um, well, not so little anymore, but you know, also from the Fat Quarter Shop, they put in a little needle minder, which is super cute. It's got a stack of fabric and an iron and a tomato pincushion. 
this is actually not super huge. It's their, their classic nice um, enamel needle minders. Um, some of the other ones they've sent have been too big for the way I, the in hand stitching, but this one looks a little bit smaller. So I might actually be able to use this on some of my regular pieces. A couple of theirs I'm using on my diamond painting because it's holding the, um, the cover back for me while I'm working on it. And then I could probably also use these when I'm stitching on um, like my needle point piece that's on a scroll frame, something like that. Um, and then last but not least is the seventh Prim Stitch series Faith and Endurance. I have one already, so you know, you know what that means. I have another giveaway coming. Um, Viv, who won last week, I still haven't mailed it, so I will. Um, I'll let you know when I mail that out. Um, I just, yeah, haven't gotten to it. Um, hopefully this week. And so this one, I'll use the word faith. So this one will be a giveaway because it's a duplicate copy. And so whoever wants to win this, say something in the comments with the word faith and I'll draw that next week. This one has a nice church and some flowers and a bird. And I don't know if I've showed this before actually, because maybe I got mine since my last, I think mine came the day I filmed last time, right after I filmed. And so you haven't seen that yet either. I'm thinking I'll add a cross on the top of mine, um, of my little church, but they probably left that out just because maybe it could serve for a variety of faiths, perhaps. So anyways, if you would like this, use the word faith in your comments. And let's see. Where should we begin? I guess we can begin with travel stitching, which again, with Faith, faith and Endurance, I, I have my copy here, but I have not yet started it because I'm still working on, on the last one. And I still have not gotten hardly anything done on it. And I don't even know if there's any difference. Here is mine. Um, and I don't know if I showed it. It's Home and Hearth. This one has the house on it. I just haven't had any time to sit down and work on this. This is on 25 count, prim vintage cloth, one over one. And I will be adding some specialty stitches when I get to it, but um, I haven't. <laughs> so this this month has been dominated by um, challenge groups and things with, especially the Full Coverage Fanatics bingo. So I think in February there will be less um, less challenge stitching. So I, I should be able to, you know, take the foot off the gas a little bit as far as stitching plans and have more freedom in that and get caught up on some of these things. So I also worked on my temperature typography a little bit. I did one more letter. This is what the whole thing will look like. You can find this in my Etsy shop along with other temperature patterns. I am stitching mine on some pale blue 28 count even weave, one over one, and that's my Jan <laughs> for January. So I'm really enjoying that. My U will have some, have a, a brighter green even because it got into the low 80s in January. This is crazy. So, but it should cool off again this week. So that'll be nice to see. Maybe, maybe, maybe we'll still get some purples in January. The Jan this other Jan the example January had quite a few purples up at the top there, but so far no purples. It's been pretty warm this year, so that's where I am. I'm at. I worked on this um, earlier in the week. I forget what day, um, but I'm thinking I do like working on this on Sundays, and I feel like I do tend to get the most available stitching time on Sundays. So I might go back to that. I was doing that with my temperature tree last year where I just pulled it out on Sunday and I was able to stay caught up pretty well by doing that. Um, so what I might do, I do only want to do one letter at a time because for example, the U, the first color in the U is the same color at the bottom of my N. So it's still on my needle. I know I'll use it, but I didn't want to go ahead and stitch it because because of the way the temp the colors flow, they're in lines across across the letter. So for example, the U, there's some for the next day, there's some here and some here. 
But if I end up getting that color, I didn't know. The day I was stitching on this, I didn't know these last two days. And so if this color is down here, then I would want to stitch this, drag my, my th carry my thread, do this part, then maybe work up, you know, and not have to carry over or cut um, just for this and then have to bring my needle out, my thread out again later. And so for me, I want to stitch a letter when I have all the colors in the letter and stitch it all at once. So I had this color of available to stitch and even a couple more available to stitch, but I chose not to start the letter U until all of it is done. And I believe I can stitch that today. But midweek is often hard to find extra stitching time to work on this because I already don't have a lot on weekdays. So I'm thinking I might still continue, wait until Sunday and just stitch however many letters I have completely, I have all the temperatures for that letter available, if that makes sense. So that's kind of what I'm planning to do. I could stitch on my U today, but I'm not going to. I'm gonna wait until Sunday and stitch on U and probably also the next letter, which whatever. A. Yeah, I should be able to stitch on that one Saturday too. So by Sunday, I should have two letters ready. What I went ahead and did is I wrote in my little journal typo. Okay, I think in the future, I'll just say T or TT just to make it easier. But whenever a letter is finished, the following date on the calendar, I'll write that it's okay to stitch that letter. But I think now I won't need to do that because I'll go ahead and just stitch whatever letter is ready to go on Sunday and probably one or two every week. So that's kind of my plan. Um, then I'll show Mill Hill Mondays because I've done two Mill Hill Mondays since I saw you last. I stitched on this last week, right after, not right after, but it's the same day as my video filming last week and um, yesterday. So this is Winged Monarch. It's a buttons and beads kit and I'm loving the colors in this. This is totally my colors. There's no blue in here. Blue and pink together is kind of my thing, but um, it's still really pretty. <laughs> so this is two, two Monday, Mill Hill Mondays worth of stitching. I can show you now. This is on the called for perforated paper, which is like a pale yellow green color. And I was able to get this, all of the light purple finished. I got like maybe this much done the first Monday. And then I finished that flower and did this flower uh, yesterday. So that's pretty nice. I think it, and it evens out to be about two or three lengths of thread on this 14 count paper. So, and I'm using the kit floss, which is pre-cut and I'll fold it in half um, to do the loop start. So that's my length of thread that I'm using for each of these. And I'm, I decided to wait to bead till the end just because then I won't have to worry about the thread catching on the beads because there's going to be a lot of beads, <laughs> which will be amazing, but I'll wait on that until later. So now those purple flowers are all done except for the beads. And so next Monday I'll work on, start working on the color, the rest of the colors in these flowers, then I'll do the background. Then I can bead. It's, it's so fun. It's coming together a lot faster than when I wasn't working on it at all. <laughs> Fancy that. Amazing what happens when you actually sit down and work on stuff. So, this week, I worked on, except for yesterday, because it was technically the beginning of a new week, but um, the, the whole week from last Monday until Sunday, I worked on one piece. I worked for my main project. I worked on a stitching shelf by Amy Stewart charted by Heaven and Earth Designs. And I have the max color version, regular size. And I used this for seven different bingo prompts in Full Coverage Fanatics, and I, as well as a few other challenges in other groups. So I got, I wanted to average about 200 stitches a day. And I got a little more than that. There was one day I didn't quite make it, but then I made up for it the next day. And then and one of the days I got like 400. So but I think 200 a day on a full coverage piece is a nice, um, a nice number to aim for. For me, it seems like that's a good goal. If I have a, a normal amount of stitching time, sometimes I, my stitching time is just gone and I don't have that time. And other times I have more. Um, but I, 
on a typical stitching day, 200 stitches is, seems like it's gonna be a nice, a nice goal to shoot for. So let's see. I will share, I guess, before and afters of the whole thing first, and then I'll do close-ups before and afters of the different sections that I worked on. Because I worked all over this piece. So, here is where it's at now. I Hopefully you got to see all that <laughs> long enough. So here's the upper, upper corner, upper right corner, where I'll, I'll put this stuff off to the side just because it's covering up some of the previous stitches, but then I want you to be able to see what I actually worked on. <clears throat> so this is a before and after of this corner. This one I used for a prompt in bingo for doors, something with doors, because there's some double doors right here. So I worked on, this is black, um, that I was able to add, get some definition on the doors. And then I also, once I, once my thread ran out, I went ahead and picked, I think, two, two different colors of parked threads, which ended up being like this stuff. And I think there was even a little bit in here, but, um, I picked up two parked threads and got those worked in. I really, really love working on this all over the place, but I also really want to get these part, uh, stitched in. So next time I work on this, if I don't have a specific prompt leading me to a certain section of the piece, I want to try to get more of these worked in because I don't like having them here obscuring the view and I, I like stitching differently now. So this is going to need to leave. <laughs> so let's see. Next, I guess we'll head down here and show you before and afters of that. This section got two chunks of work done on it. One was for wine, for hot beverage. I, I said this was mold wine. Whoops. So this is really big. This is on 28 count tea dyed Monaco, two over one half stitches. So first was mold wine, which the wine bottle is over here. And this is actually a little bit of red in the wine, but I did that on a different day. Um, the wine bottle, a pillar, and a table starting right here. This is part of the lady that's sitting here stitching. And I wanted to get some of the blue in the window done with her hot air balloons in the window behind her, um, but I didn't have enough time to do that. So the first day I just worked on this black mainly. And then another day I came in and did red for the prompt for red. <laughs> Red stitches. This is all 321. And so I, I did that for that prompt. And then down here was one for dog. We'll just show the before and after of that one. So I just worked in the dog. I think I did two or three colors on that golden retriever there. Got him a little bit more filled out. And nothing more on that side. I did work in the middle here. This was on a a prompt for something with words or books. And so these were book spines. And I also had a prompt in another challenge that gave you a bonus if you worked on the words themselves. So I decided to pick some of these really tiny little dark spots in the middle that were start the start of the confetti to hopefully see the words a stitch in time. I have a hard time seeing that <laughs> totally happen, but because it's so pixelated, but hopefully you can see some of that. And so those colors ended up being all over here as well. So I just picked a color, literally one stitch. I think one of the colors had two stitches in the actual book I wanted to write, you know, have the letters, but then I finished my string around here. So that's what that looks like now. And then this bottom section, I had two prompts as well. And this was a nice winter scene. And so this one, I first came down for a literal, a prompt for winter scene. So I came down here with this black along the book spines, and then I caught up with the snow and worked the snow across and started working on the snowman. And then I added some of the his hat and buttons too. And then the next prompt was for evergreen trees. So then I came up here as started here with this color and came across and down this evergreen tree and then was able to come up 
and work on this tree as well. And I think I added a little bit of a green in here too. The rest of it was like a light, a medium blue color, but gray blue for the snow. So that had two prompts for evergreen trees and winter scenes. So I think that was all of the changes that I made this time. So that was a lot of fun. It's This brings me a lot of joy working like this, where I'm able to just pick a section and work on that specific item. So that's a lot of fun. I'm glad I didn't give up on this piece. Um, I do wish I could keep going sometimes on the sections and spend more than one day on it. So, but with the way that <clears throat> I had this month planned out, there's just, there was just no way to spend more time on each section and still meet the goals that I'd made. So that's kind of the way it goes sometimes. Um, but I am looking forward to always having this available to work on for many different types of prompts. So that was a lot of fun. And then yesterday was a one day challenge in the Full Coverage Fanatics for birds. And so I went ahead and worked on my mini bird song, which is another Heaven and Earth design. This is by Tatiana Fedrova. And there are some birds in there. So of course this works for birds. And I hadn't worked on this a whole lot last year, so it was nice to get it out again. And I am really happy with how far I got. This is on 40 count, vertical one over one, half stitches. And I decided to go ahead and, par and stitch in my park threads because again, they were just bugging me that they were always there. So I, that's what I started to do. So this is um, before and after where I got to yesterday, a little over, I think it was like 250 stitches. And most of what I did was just right around in this region. I picked these top parked threads in this column and they were all greens. So I filled in a lot of this and, uh, and then down here as well. Um, and then the last green I picked ended up coming very easily countable up here, which there's a bird right here. This this branch or whatever goes right in front of the bird's body. So there's a bird right here. So it came up here and then went over here into the, these greens. And this is literally the edge of the, I think this is like two or three stitches from the edge of the design. So that's really exciting. So once I was over here, I decided to pick up the top parked thread I had that had a couple stitches of, of a contrasting blue. It wasn't this main blue, it was a, a highlight blue. And then I also put that in over here because I could stitch easily from these greens that I had done. So that is where I got to this week and I'm so happy. I just want to be done with those threads again and uh, work on it in a more uh, cross-country fashion. So that's exciting. And I know a lot of you have expressed like amazement I guess at how I can stitch cross country especially on that stitching shelf piece because it's I'm just going all over the place and I'm not gridding and um I don't really have a secret um every I've, I've had people ask what's my secret and I don't really have one I just am a fairly accurate counter and that's really all I can say um I just I make sure my count is right before I get too far into it. So I'll I'll count to my new location. And like, like I showed on this one and on my stitching shelf, I try to pick a path where I won't have to count that far. Because the farther you count, the more likely you are to mess up. So like I'll stitch along the shelf and the stitching shelf, or I'll come down the book, or I won't just count 80 stitches over to get to somewhere most of the time. <laughs> I'll like, I'll stitch my way over to where I want to be rather than just counting because you're more likely to make mistakes if you try to count a long distance. If I do need to count a long distance, I'll use like pins and mark my mark every 10 stitches and double check the 10 every every 10 to make sure I'm doing that correctly too. When I'm stitching just like this, um, when I get to a new area that's like kind of around the corner and I can now come down and test it with what was under here if I'm stitching like around here then I'll come and check this distance. Is this correct? 
If it's not, I know I messed up somewhere in this little section, so I'll check it and then I'll check it to something over here and I'll every once in a while I'll just stop and and double check my distances here and there and everywhere. Um I have an example. <clears throat> so far this is going well. I don't want to jinx myself, but here at the bottom, when I was stitching on the snowman, I came across and at one point and stopped what I was doing and double checked that this over here lined up with the other winter that I had down here and it does line up. So that's something that I'll do every little bit is I'll just check it, check it, check it, check it, check it multiple times. And it doesn't slow me down necessarily because I, it's become such a habit. Um, but that's really the only thing I can say. I don't really, I think it must just be in my brain somehow to be an accurate counter. And I know that's hard for some people. Um, so if you, if you have to grid, um, to make it work, then grid. There's nothing wrong with gridding. So um, don't feel like you're not doing a good job because you have to grid. Um, everybody's different and everybody needs to do it a different way. And I know my method doesn't work for everybody and their methods don't work for me. So it's okay, as long as you're having fun. <laughs> so, okay, so this, oh yeah, I also worked on Quick Stitch Iris a little bit throughout the week. I did miss a few days but I did get back to it and stitched on it for a few days. So, where is it? So here's Quick Stitch Iris that I'm working on most days, except for Mill Hill Mondays. So I did not work on this yesterday, but I did put in, see you saw it. So since you saw it, I've stitched on it four times. So this is, where I've gotten to on four little stitching days. And I think I worked on this one time when we were watching BattleBots instead of my Prim Stitch series piece. Um, Cause I felt like I was kind of running out of time. So there's times like that where I probably could have worked on my little house and get gotten more done on that, but I worked on this instead. Or I'll work on my typography piece. So that's kind of what I chose to do this week. Um, so I'm filling in this flower quite a bit, which is really nice um, to see that coming alive. I don't know what all else I did. I might have worked over here a little bit, but I can't honestly remember. Um, so hopefully you can see something different. <laughs> Got about, yeah, four days of work. One day was a little more than usual because I think that was the day I worked on it in front of the TV. So I just kept stitching until the show was over. Most shows I cannot stitch during because I like to follow it. I like to watch it uh, more closely, but there are a couple things that, that I could stitch during. So if, if we get those shows out, then I can stitch a little bit on my travel pieces now that we don't travel much <laughs> these days. Um, <clears throat> I guess that now I can go into what I'm planning to do this week. So I do have some more bingo prompts that I'm trying to get to, but first, in Cross Stitch Township, which is a closed group on Facebook, there's a birthday prompt for your oldest whip. And so once again, this is the one I have dubbed my current oldest whip because I have a few that are from uh, way back when and I don't honestly remember which one is first because I didn't keep track of anything back then. But there's several of these that are at least 20 years old, probably more. And this is the one I'm currently labeling as my oldest whip. So if something comes up that says work on your oldest whip, this is the one that's gonna get get it. Um, so I worked on this not that long ago in December. So this time, um, I don't have any stitch goals, so I'm not gonna count my stitches. So I will just stitch and stitch whatever I wanna stitch and have fun with it. So this is where it's at now. This is on the kit, Ada with the kit floss. 14 count, looks like antique white, Ada. So I may work some more on the border. I may work some more on this boot. I'm not entirely sure what I will do, but this is my main project for today. So assuming the day goes smoothly, I'll work on Iris for at least 65 stitches and then I'll pull this out and see what I get done. And then I'll go into 
our gardeners are coming, so hopefully it's not going to be too noisy. Um, I have two bingo pieces this week, but I'm going to work on each of them for two days, so that'll be four bingo squares completed when I'm done with them. Um, these are for, let's see, the first one is Empress Eugenie. These are for outdoor activity and hats. The prompt on bingo is, a lot of them are wintry prompts, and the prompt was mittens, scarves, hats, or sweaters. So a lot of people interpreted that as um, winter gear in general. Um, but it just says mittens, scarves, hats, or sweaters. So I don't have anybody necessarily wearing a winter hat, unless you count that snowman with the top hat, but even that's not really a winter hat. But these ladies are holding some hats. So here, here's a hat right here. I won't be stitching anywhere near that hat, so I won't be able to work on it, but there is a hat in there and I don't think there's any more. Yeah, but there's definitely a hat. And I have other ones with hats, but this one worked for, um, I think I'm gonna use this for the Gone with the Wind prompt in Crescent Township, as well as the bookshelf challenge in Full Coverage Fanatics. So it worked for those, and so I didn't wanna to have to pull out too many unique projects um, because there's an obvious hat that I'm working on in the love letter, but I didn't necessarily wanna pull that out for other, other prompts. So I didn't, this is the one I'm choosing. <laughs> Let's just stick with it. This way. So this one, I'm excited to get some more done on it so it can look a little bit more like something. This is where I'm at to start with. Kind of a small start. Uh, this is 28 count Dove Gray Monaco, two over one half stitches. Because there's blends in here, so I need to use two strands. And hopefully that'll get some significant progress. I'm hoping at least 400 stitches, about 200 each day. Okay, I had to take a quick break because the leaf blower <laughs> was right outside. So now the leaves are on the other side of the house. Um, this is my other um, full coverage fanatics bingo piece that I'll be working on. This one is going to be for cozy spot and something with two, two, something that has two of it. So there's two people here. And the other one I forgot to mention, Empress Eugenie. Also the second bingo prompt I'm using that for is the outdoor activity because all the ladies are outside having their picture taken or chit chatting or whatever they're doing. Um, so that's what that one was. This is um, Stitcher's Retreat, where it's at now. This is my uh, 28 count Rose Monaco, two over one half, st half stitches. And this is the upper corner. I, I was gonna do Extreme Cost Country with this dark brown, but then I needed color. So I added some green over here for a prompt a while back. And then I added, um, this past year I added this, which is like a, some sh some shadows on the wall from the lamp to just to double check that those ladies are actually <laughs> stitched properly in the right space. So um, I'm not sure where I'll go with this actually. I might add more hair or skin colors or wall colors or yeah, I don't really know. We shall see what I'm in the mood for. I actually, I still have some of that gold thread on my needle, so I'll start there. I'll start with that and see where I go. Maybe, I feel like doing some, some skin colors. I think that would be fun. So we'll see what that looks like. Sometimes it depends on, again, I wanna get about 400 stitches on this, 200 each day. So sometimes if something, I'll probably pick a color that's got a decent amount of stitches in that color so I don't have to do one or two stitches and put it away. Um, so that's kind of my plan for that. And then, so that'll be two days on, one day on Antique Shoe Collection, two days on Empress Eugenie, two days on Stitcher's Retreat, and then we're back to Sunday, which is actually a blank day. So for the bingo, I'm gonna work on my dragon ride for my son for one day. And this is by Teresa Winsler. And here's where this is at now. This is on 28 count light blue even weave by MCG Textiles. And I'm doing it two over two in most places and one over one on the man, which is charted that way. All of all of him, him and his, his hands, clothes, everything is one over one. And then there's some specialty 
Uh, no, actually there's no specialty stitches. There's just um, a lot of fractionals and blends, like especially in the on the edges of things, there's a lot of fractionals and there's um, a lot of blends. Almost every two over two color is blends. So I'm not sure what I'll do this um, this time. Maybe some more up here in this wing because it's bluer colors. That might be fun for my son to see. But just one day, so I might... Uh... I worked on the man last time, but I think I'm... I think I'll feel... I feel like filling in more more dragon. So let's maybe do that this time. So I think that's everything I have to show you this week. So that should be fun to do. And then going forward, I've got three more pieces for my, to fill up my bingo prompts. I'll do um, three more pieces next week that I'll have two days each. And that'll be the end of my, my full coverage blackout bingo not counting but spending one day on each prompt that's kind of my my thing for this week or for this month and i haven't crossed off my bird yet but i did cross off everything else that i've done so far so i don't think i even have a bingo yet because <laughs> i'm kind of taking it like just whichever one fits so yeah i think i'll get i'll get a bingo this week because this is my hat smitten's scarves one so that'll be a full row right there so yay <laughs> Anyways, um, I think that's all. I'll, I'll sign off now and hopefully come back to, to you next week to share what I worked on. And um, I hope you have a wonderful week. Take care, love your neighbor, and happy stitching. Bye.